You're tuned in to Nerd Overload, your weekly pop and geek culture show covering movies, TV, games, and comics. Now your hosts, Cody Pinnock, Sam Dunham, and Josh Harrison. Hey everyone, welcome to Nerd Overload, the pop and geek culture show that's kid tested and mother approved. I'm Sam. I'm Josh. And back again with us, pinch hitting for us. Parker's back. Parker, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for letting me on the show again. Absolutely. We're glad to have you back. So we have a bunch of things we're going to be talking about this episode. Uh, a lot of movie trailers this time. And we can legally talk about them because <laughs> the strike is over. Yeah, We're no longer strike busting. So, uh, but first we're going to talk about some things we've been checking out. Check it out! And that intro was for Kix Cereal back in the day. Old, yep. old wow. commercials for Kix Cereal. Oh, man. I used to... I loved Kix. Was... I used to eat Kix, although I would put sugar on my Kix cereal. No, I thought it was fine the way it was. See? No, I, I would did... always... Yeah, you always put I a spoonful always... of sugar on the Kix cereal. I always put sugar on my Cheerios. Yeah, I yeah. could see that. I could see that. Sugar on the cereal. Back the before Cheerios. they started having, you know, weird flavors of Cheerios. Yeah. Sugar on Wheaties. Never ate Wheaties. Okay, yeah. We had Wheaties from time to time. Yep. Nope. You know what? Oh, we had Fruit Loops more than anything, and Apple Jacks growing up. Um, had a lot of Apple Jacks. Peanut butter Captain Crunch. We never had the pe- Captain Crunch. That's that stuff will rip up the the roof of your mouth, man. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just we didn't have it growing up. Yeah, but it was all it was. We were a Fruit Loop. We were a um an Apple Jack house. Every once in a while, we do a um Lucky Charms, but not often. You know. Mm. The only part of the Lucky Charms is really that good is the unhealthy part. Oh, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> you know what? They actually put out for Halloween this year chocolate uh, Lucky Charms. Oh, I it saw was, that. Yeah, choc- yeah. The 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 grain was like chocolate. It was like the um, cocoa crisp. Yeah, or, yeah, cocoa crispies or whatever. Yeah, and then it had the marshmallows. Super delicious. Wow. Really, really good. Highly recommend. Anyway, that was cereal talk. <laughs> 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 let's let's talk about some things we've been doing this week. Um, Parker, we'll start with you. Okay, so last time I was here, I was in the first half of doing 31 for 31, which is basically for the entire month of October, watch a horror movie and review it. Now I'm done with it, but one of the more recent ones I did watch was in the theaters was Saw 10 or Saw X. Right, okay. Which Saw X. Yeah. Elon Elon Musk becomes the new Jigsaw. (laughs) Or or X is going to give it to you. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, I will actually say... For someone who has watched all of the movies, it's actually my t- number three in the franchise. Really? So the, that high? Uh, here's the thing. So I'll give a spoiler free discussion of it. Basically, it's set between one and two. So it's considered Saw, the real Saw 2, because the second oh, one was, okay. was a script from a completely different uh, director. And the studio was like, we need a Saw 2. Have at it. Gotcha. Oh, okay. they Super Mario Brothers 2'd it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to say uh, Tokyo Drift. Yeah. Fast and the Furious Tokyo yeah. Drift, where it takes, it's the third movie, but it's the seventh or eighth, possibly, in the series. Yeah, but the gist of it is, so it's between one and two. John Kramer, a.k.a. Jigsaw, is trying to find a cure for cancer. He goes to a support group and finds some guy who tells him about this brand new experimental treatment and drug out in, like, Mexico. Mm-hmm. And... He goes there, he's told he's cured, and then he finds out it was complete snake oil. He got fleeced, you know, several hundred grand. And this time, instead of being the villain, he is an anti-hero. As he goes after the the snake oil salesman crew who's just been scamming similar people out of hundreds of thousands of dollars for years. Oh, interesting. A good use of his jigsaw powers. Yeah, Yeah. so it's it's him and uh, Amanda, Shawnee Smith, again, from the first couple is teaming with him in this process. It's weird that they made this otherwise villain into an anti-hero, but it works. Interesting. And it's Topamel really is having more fun than ever, so he's working it. My only two real big issues are it's almost two hours, and there's some scenes you can tell they really dragged it out. Oh, I see. And the way they kind of set up the last big portion to where he ultimately wins... There's too many conveniences where a halfway more competent enemy would have beaten him. Gotcha. Okay. So the script could have used like another half a pass or something yeah, like yeah. that to kind of but, tighten it down yeah. or something. Otherwise, I would recommend it if you like the Saw franchise. It's 
only for people who really have only seen the first couple for the mm. most part, but are, I would put it as number three in the whole franchise. Really? Okay. Well, good deal. Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what? The Saw movies, I've, I've, I've watched the first one, and, you know, again, horror movies are not, like, legit horror movies are not really my thing. Fair but enough. But the first one was all right. It was for I what like, it was. I like the first one because I loved that twist. I didn't yes, see it coming. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that movie stands out in my head because of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like you, I'm not a huge horror movie guy. I'm even less of a of a gore porn yeah, guy. Yeah, I'm not a yeah, I'm not a fan of that either. I love suspense and mindful horror. I don't like gross horror. I like I've never liked gross horror. I like gore in movies when it is over the top and very clearly com- comical. Yeah, t- tongue in cheek. Yeah, yeah. Toxic Avenger level. Okay, that's fair. That's yeah. fair. Things where it's it's cartoonish. Yeah. Like or Evil Dead, like Evil, evil Dead, 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 Evil, evil Dead, Dead Two. Two. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's yes. <laughs> Though yeah. speaking of like cheesy gore, I saw this thing, and it was kind of like the origin of the giant blood spray that you see in vintage Japanese samurai films. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, sure. Apparently, that whole touch point in the genre actually stemmed from a, an equipment malfunction. Oh, really? There's a duel between two characters, and when he slashes him, I mean, obviously, it's, there's it, the the Tarantino amount of like blood syrup mm-hmm. that just sprays out everywhere, and everyone has the shocked look on their face. Yeah, it was not supposed to look like that. It was supposed to be a slow dribble, and it ac- accidentally sprayed out. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was all, gotcha. it was a, it was an equipment malfunction, gotcha. and it yeah. became a touchstone of the genre. Okay, right. That bled over in no pun intended. <laughs> um, <laughs> good, very good. Into other stuff like Tarantino stuff and, you know, things like Sweeney Todd and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I, I just I don't know, just thinking about unnecessary gore and whatnot. And that for that, for some reason that pops in my head and I'm like, that is an interesting story. And I wanted to <laughs> right. share it. Yeah, that's cool. That's really yeah. cool. I think that might have been a I, I know it was a Kurosawa and I don't remember which movie it was. I don't I definitely don't think it was the Sony Chiba. I think it was a Toshiro Mifun. Oh, yeah, probably. Toshiro probably. Mifune. Yeah. Um, film but it, you know it's this weird like the little things you think you you didn't know and then it's like huh something you've seen so much in your life and you're like an accident becomes the trope yeah kind of thing. Right. yeah it's kind of right. interesting yeah 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 but yeah <laughs> i just wanted to get that out there because oh, sure. it, lives, oh, no. it lives in my head <laughs> yeah. uh well speaking of kind of over the top action and gore and stuff like that i did go back and rewatch. i got a got a wild hair the other day and i rewatched the old a uh, YouTube parody series, Italian Spider-Man. Oh. <laughs> yes. So what this is, it was made by a, uh, a handful of Australian creators. Right. And it was a spoof on the 1970s uh, Italian knockoff films. Right. As well as like the Turkish um, uh, t- Three Dev Adam, which is Turkish Superman. and Tur- Right. Yeah, whatever. Turkish Star Wars, that sort of thing. Is that where that one weird Doctor Strange comes from? No, no. The the weird Doctor Strange was its own thing, mm. and that was an actual Doctor Strange. Ah. This is this is a full blown parody. So in this film, you follow Italian Spider Man, who is the most not Spider Man character you'll ever see. He's this overweight guy with a mustache and long hair and like a little domino mask with a poorly drawn spider on his <laughs> chest. Basically, just kind of making. <laughs> bad decisions it's it's closer to an austin powers oh yeah than it is uh, a, a spider-man but it's just funny that they're constantly calling him italian spider-man it's great when you watch it all together it's about 30 minutes long and it is it's just great yeah J- just in the pure absurdity of it all yes it is 100 percent absurd right and uh that sh- series was such a hit back in the early 2000s uh, I mean, this I mean, this thing was like 14 years old or something like that. It's really old. Right. Uh, but it uh, led to the uh, Australian miniseries uh, Danger Five. Oh, which yes. was uh, a 60s style, basically like the Thunderbirds, but live action actors. But no, like one of the gags is there's a guy who's reading a uh, sensible chuckle magazine <laughs> and it's he's just looking at it and he's just going. <laughs> 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 Turns the page and then another. <laughs> yeah it's that is very a good. sensible chuckle it's right? sensible chuckle yeah but it's it's stupid but a very funny very uh that, that's very a very australian out. yes yes very very australian 
Yeah, the the whole team they're all uh they're all supposed to be Americans, but they all just have their Australian accents. They're not hiding anything. <laughs> it's it's good. It's good. Worth a check out. <laughs> uh Josh, what have you been doing? I played a beta test for a game called The Finals. Okay. Okay. It was made by a handful of um ex dice developers. Uh Dice being the developer who has, you know, did modern battlefield and stuff like that. Mm. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It's got destructible environments, first person shooter, it's teams of three, and there's multiple teams on a in a game mode. I don't know. I the I guess the the blanket pitch of this game is it's a first person shooter with the mobility and everything of like a Call of Duty or a Battlefield set to a sport. Okay. And the whole thing is you have to collect cash from these vault drops and you have to take it to another vault to deposit it to score in the round. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's weird. I know it's weird, but it's, but you can kind of like, there's three classes you can kind of create or make. Mm -hmm. There's Mm -hmm. like the balanced one. There's the heavy one that has like a lot of defense and there's the really fast one that has like no health. Right. Right. And then, you know, you've got a bunch of cosmetic BS to make your guy look special. Mm-hmm. That has no real purpose other than to look special. It's all right. It's an all right game. It's not balanced at all. Well, you said it's in it's in like beta or something, right? Yeah, yeah. So they so, so they still have time to work on so, it. So they're still doing the baby steps. I I hope so. <laughs> I kind of bounced off it real quick. I played a few times and I'm like, eh, eh. I don't know. I got excited because I heard like X dice and I like dice as like when it comes to like. You know, your soldier shoot him boy up games. I've always liked those. Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. I like Battlefield. I like vehicles. I like grand scale. And it almost feels like the maps are too small mm. for what they want to mm. do. Or not too small. Too big for what they want to do. Okay. So like if you're running to one area, grabbing something, it feels it, like back it takes to the home for, base or well, whatever. It's, not, it, it feels it's, like, it's too empty. Well, it's not even that it's too empty. It's too, I don't know. I feel like there needs to be more than just a handful, like, like, Th- more than three teams on a map or whatever it's mm. gotcha i yeah i kind of get what you're saying yeah and like i said the the balance issues are bad and everything and it's it's too easy to get on an underpowered team and just get steamrolled in a match oh sure right. like there was one point where i was the only other guy and i was it was not having fun yeah yeah, yeah that kind of sucked i played shredder's revenge a little bit Oh sure, okay. the the ninja, the ninja turtle, the, the uh, retro, the uh, retro style, yeah, style throwback kind of game. Yep, beat, beat em, em up. up, beat em up style Ninja Turtles game. Yeah, and it's fine. It feels like you know the other ones. Uh, you know, you got multicolored, you know, foot ninjas that have different whatever's they do. Sure, mm-hmm. you've got you know things you can pick up and throw at enemies. I've heard a complaint about that that they gave the turtles too many options. Too many like directional input plus attack to like do special moves and stuff like yeah. that. Like they needed to tone that back a little bit. Yeah, the combos get a bit meh, like almost like fighting game combos in a way. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Um, Which normally I love fighting game combos. I love fighting games, but uh, I've heard in that, your yeah. in your in your in your side scrolling beat 'em up game, it feels too. It does feel a bit too much. Yeah. Um, though. <laughs> I'll always enjoy a game that allows me to grapple an enemy and throw them at the screen. That's yeah, that's a good <laughs> that's a good gimmick. That's I've always I've, gimmick. I've always loved dumb stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but yeah, it it felt very it felt like stepping stepping back into an old comfortable pair of shoes, kind of. Okay. Like it felt it felt all right. Who was your turtle of choice? Leonardo. Oh, like, really? Okay. Le- Leo Leo is always my go to. Really? Okay. Leo is always my favorite. Okay. All right. It might be the swords. I don't know. Yeah. Right. But I mean, the different turtles do have different attributes. Leo's pretty balanced. Donnie's got range because he's got the staff. Right. Mm-hmm. Raph has more power. Right. And Mikey has more speed. That That's tracks. Right. That makes sense. You, did you try any of the uh, extra characters? Because I like know they April, added April and Casey Jones and uh, Splinter. I don't. See, I didn't see. I didn't see Casey. There's April and there's Splinter. Okay. And then if you have the DLC, you get um, Usagi Ujimbo. Oh, and gotcha. And you get um, Karai. Oh yeah. All um, right. 
Interesting. Uh, but I didn't I didn't get I haven't picked up the DLC yet. So Okay. I, I kinda wanted to beat the main game before I picked before up the DLC. You, gotcha. Even okay, though I really sense. love Usagi Yojimbo. Right. Mm -hmm. He's probably one of my favorite tangentially attached characters. Just barely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like he exists because they existed within the same comic company. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh but you can go to his dimension mm. uh in the DLC. Mm -hmm. So that part is got me kind of excited because I did love, you know, I do like Sakai's comics, you know? Yeah. So it would be a nice to see that play out. That would be kind of cool. Oh, man. I just had a memory unlocked. I forgot about that Osagi Ujimbo series that came out or mm. did or it was like on Netflix or something. Yeah. Yeah. It was about his grand. Yeah. His descendant. His descendant. Right. The, the I kind rab of forgot, rabbit samurai. Yeah. And yeah. I kind of forgot that it existed. And I'm just like. Oh, that was a thing. Yeah. yeah. It was just one of those that Sally just kind of came and went. Yeah. Like there was like little to no fanfare. Well, it's Netflix. So uh, yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. I'm and we'll get, we'll get more into that later. Well, uh -huh. so, well, so when did that come out? Oh, God. I remember talking about it on the show. I don't know. A couple years ago. Yeah. Two, three years ago. Oh, okay. So this wasn't like early on where they're still trying to get their footing. No, this was. Yeah, this, this was, was a while ago. I'm okay. So this is when they were already established. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So they totally dropped the ball on this. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. You guys keep talking. I'm going to try to find this. Uh, okay. You no. Know, speaking of the turtles, have I know I posted on the Facebook group. Are you taking a look into the Palladium RPG for the I Ninja am. Turtles? Yes. I'm. Okay. I'm. I'm considering uh, backing that Kickstarter uh, at like the lower level or something just yeah. to get the book. Yeah. So Palladium. Uh, put out a uh, tabletop um, Kickstarter. Kickst rule, yeah. Well, that was the, the original rules for their games back in the late eighties, um, late eighties, early nineties. They did a module for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and they're going to be re-releasing them. Yeah. So I was talking with the with the DM of uh, my uh, Dungeons and Dragons group uh, the other day, and he mentioned that yeah, he had those when he was younger, and uh, the thing with Palladium Games is their rules were modular and they all fit together. So you can, so in the megaverse in the, yeah. So they, so you can have turtles and you can have robots and anything that they created, all the rules fit together. Yes. So that was stackable. The, the lore was interesting, but the mechanics and editing were just so such a disaster. That at is what I was told yeah. that it's, that it was uh, a lot, a lot of dice rolling. Yeah, it, it's a very like, dense system, but... Yeah. I must say, that just sounds like Palladium. <laughs> yeah, but it's editing is worse because there's a few of their books where it will tell you, if you want to get this, you need to have this book. It might be a future book, which oh. which is the wor which is worst in their uh, Call of Cthulhu-based RPG called Beyond the Supernatural. Because mm -hmm. for their second edition, they released the core book, and they were supposed to have two more books, and they never got released... It so so they teased things in the first core book that you never got in later yeah, yeah. on. It was supposed to basically be three small books to oh. to to subfunction as a core book without having a giant sized core book. Oh gotcha. And that happened almost twenty years ago. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> uh so Samurai Rabbit, the Usagi Chronicles came out in twenty twenty two. Okay. Oh wow, that recent. So yeah, so a year or so ago. Yeah. One of these days, I'll, I might step into it. I kind of just forgot they existed. Yeah. Right. We'll do it before Netflix uh, raises their prices again. Because oh. it, it, they're doing it. I know. I know. I know. I'm, they're literally the most expensive streaming service. I'm so close to dropping them. Right. <sighs> Honestly, I well, I, I, I lowered mine from the uh, uh, ad free to the ad supported. Oh, the ad tier. Yeah. yeah. Just because it's I mean, that's what I initially was paying. Yeah. I think it's like six ninety nine or seven ninety nine, something like yeah. that. And it is once the ad supported goes above ten dollars, I'm dropping them. Oh, it just can't do it. Speaking right. of streaming services, uh, did you see that they announced Disney Plus and Hulu are merging, emerging, yep. emerging yeah. into one s platform? I guess. Yeah, yeah, so they could start charging people double for it. Yeah, I know, right? right? Yeah. Uh, I guess it's going to roll out officially sometime next year. Yeah. Something like there's that. There's like a beta yeah, there's a beta coming up for it or a, beta, a test for it. Yeah, I'm I'm not looking forward to it again because they're probably going to I know I was joking saying that they're going to charge double for it. But they're probably going to charge It's not outside Disney's wheelhouse. Yeah. 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 Especially with Bob Iger back. Cuz the streaming uh. streaming was supposed to take the place of cable and now 
it's just you, as bad if not to worse get than everything, cable. You have you're paying as much if not more than if you had cable. Yeah, it's not especially with like other services kind of like jumping on the Netflix bandwagon and penalizing people for password sharing and stuff. Yeah, that was a whole thing as well. <sighs> yeah. Which is funny because if you go back to like old Netflix tweets and stuff, there's always like, you know, they're talking, they talk about sharing your password. Yeah. Yeah. They're it's like, like, they're totally cool with it. Yeah. It's like, you know, the true love is sharing a Netflix password or something like that. Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh. yeah. Ooh, tweets that did not age well at all. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, uh, not at all. All right. Well, do you guys have anything else that you uh, checked out before we uh, go to break? A uh, short one I have is on Shudder. I watched the documentary. This is Guar, which is a long two and a half hour documentary on the history of the cult heavy metal band Guar. Yeah. And it it does focus a lot on the late mastermind David Brocky, a.k.a. Odorous Arungus, but they get as many of the current and former members as they can into the story. Interesting. Okay. Do they, do they go into the stuff when they had the, the female front person? Uh, yeah, they do get into a little bit of that. But they did get as many of the people as they could that were still around. Mm-hmm. But they also do focus a lot on David Brocky because he was the mastermind of the band. Well, he yeah. kind of was Guar for yeah. the longest yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like you know the origin of Guar. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But he was he was definitely quite a character. He was kind of like an Andy Kaufman esque at times. Because yeah, he was kind of a little divisive. Uh, then he also at times would just do the most random things. Like w- one of the stories was they were doing a tour in like Europe, and he just decided just for the sake of it, he was just going to communicate as if he was you know the Terminator, not because he was trying to get any role or he saw Terminator Two, just because hey, I'm doing this because I can. Yeah, I mean performance for performance sake kind I of mean, thing. I mean, it's Guar. Yeah, it's, it's Guar. Yeah, <laughs> it's the most edgy theater kids from Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, I guess we should say what Guar is. It's they wear a bunch of uh, horror monster costumes, ba- ba- kind of thing. Basically, a more macabre, edgy but DIY Kiss. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Kiss. The next step up from it's, Kiss. It's, kind it's, of. it's gross Kiss. Yeah, 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 we, yeah. With a little bit of at times edgy satire. Right. Yeah. The, the whole thing is they wear costumes. They are these weird characters that right. play music. Yeah. Yes. I I'm a fan of the concept, but I I don't like any of their music. Uh, I I've tried and I just it's not. I I saw them live and that's what sold me over. Mm-hmm. was just the entire you know theatrics and absurdity kind of like with uh professional wrestling like once oh, sure. you see it in person it clicks it, it, sure i and i can understand that i can understand that i mean i i i, I was a big fan of oakley dokley the uh the, <laughs> the, the, flanders, the flanders the flanders metal band and what, what was the mcdonald's max one? sabbath Ma- max, max sabbath, max sabbath, sabbath is, is actually good is a, is a funny gimmick i like i like gimmick bands oh, and stuff yeah. like that oh, yeah. but yeah just for whatever reason the guar's music just never you know it, it never quite clicked with it, me. it was comedic thrash metal yeah so which the, <laughs> you remember that transformers uh metal band vaguely no. yeah vaguely yeah where they all they dress like the main guy dressed like uh like uh hot rod or rodimus prime rodimus prime yeah oh, uh, interesting. The, yeah and one's like uh one's a rc there's a woman that looks like rc mm-hmm yeah, and their whole thing is like they sing like Transformers themed music. Yeah, yeah, I do remember something about that. I can't remember the name of the band, but yeah, yeah it's like yeah. Cybertron, C- Cybertron something, I something think. or other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only one that would be really interesting would be Austrian Death Machine, where it's literally it's ba- all it's all, all it's all Schwarzenegger references. And, and basically, uh-huh. half the time it's a, the main person singing it, and the other time it's someone doing an oral impression of just the other half of the lyrics. I remember when their album uh, Get to the Chapa. Uh, was released. I, was yeah. work, I was working at the record store at the time. I remember, I remember that. I, I remember Austrian Death Machine. Yeah, yeah. That's so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's take a break. And when we come back, we'll get into some news. My grandpa has a radio show. It's called Long Play. He just plays old records. I'm not sure what that is, but they make grandpa really happy. If you like old records, you can listen with Grandpa if you want to. Friday nights at 11. And Saturday afternoons at 3. Right here on WZMO. Hey, we are back from the break. Let's go ahead and get into some news. (laughs) 
All right. And I think the first thing we're going to get into before we get into any of these trailer talk or anything like that, uh, the big news this week is the SAGA after actor strike uh, has uh, come to an end, or at least they have come to an, an agreement, agreement. To, yeah, to, to a tentative agreement for, I think, three years. Something like that. Yeah. And they, they said that is it's still going to be an ongoing conversation that they're going to be having with the studios. But as of right now, actors can go back to work. Things can go back into production. We don't have to watch a bunch of reality television anymore. Oh, thank goodness. We, we can let the Golden Bachelor die. Oh, <laughs> that was a real thing. It was. The golden. Or, or a Love is Blind. Love or is blind. a. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Love Island. Or not Love Island. Uh, <laughs> That's a that's a stupid mobile game. That is, yeah, um, may as well but, be one. But anyway, I know. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I, I actually have uh, what the uh, what the terms are for this um, for the strike being over. Uh, looks like um, the highlights are um, there's a seven percent uh, raise in minimum uh, pay for actors, mm -hmm. um, just across the board, which is great. Uh, da -da 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 -da, looks like especially for jobbers and like you know Day career players. extras, yeah. The other big one is they they've added a bunch of um, guards, safeguards against AI um, generated actors, except for in cases where the original human that the AI is based off of is um, gives their permission and is is compensated for their likeness rights. Good. Well, that's good. That's so. Good. So basically, yeah, if they want to if they want to make a crowd scene, if they want to film one crowd scene um, full of extras, the extras have to get paid for the continued use of their likeness in other scenes where they digitally add people in. Oh, okay. Okay. So, Excellent. so it's, a, it's, I think it's good. I think that's a good halfway point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the big thing the from the beginning was against, you know, the use of AI to generate content. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cause it, it did set a dangerous precedent. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was bad enough, you know, with use, the using CG, yeah, with writing or using CGI to digitally put in dead, dead actors. actors. Yeah. 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 That one feels weird. I mean, if it's one thing if I agree, it's one thing if the actor while they were living said, hey, you can use my likeness in perpetuity as long as I my family or my estate is or my estate compensated, is compensated right. fairly for it. It's another thing to have. Uh, Peter Cushing, who would never have even heard of the term AI yeah. likeness. Yeah, was dead long before the idea was even really conceived in the popular culture. Exactly, exactly. And that, yeah. But that's good, the good. We can, yeah, we can now have movies happen again. <laughs> we can, we can talk, we can legally talk about yeah. the trailers. Yeah, Un Fro yeah, Frozen projects can finally get they going can, again. Yeah. yeah, they can yeah. get moving. There can actually be proper press junkets and whatnot. Yes. Like commercial tours. Yes. Um, People can start wearing Halloween costumes again. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, well, well, ones that are not based on publicly, uh, public domain ideas. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just feel bad for some of the movies that were released during the strike. Like I want to say blue beetle got the, took the biggest hit because what? that movie was, it wasn't the best, but it was pretty yeah, solid. Well, wasn't that supposed to really be max. And then it got dumped into theaters. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that got, it, it, it was like right on the line where they didn't know what to do with it. And they had put too much time and money into it. Right. At that point, they couldn't they couldn't cancel it like Warner Brothers seems to do with everything else, which we'll get to later. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but they weren't able to do any ever like press yeah, it, for it, the film. And uh, Blue Beetle is not a superhero from the DC Comics that most people outside of comic readers will recognize. Right. It could have really used a lot of positive press behind it and they just couldn't do it and yeah. it kind of tanked that film it, it, unfortunately it also had the bad luck of falling two back-to-back -back, uh bombs in shazam fear, uh, fear of the gods and the flash yeah plus yeah. it was also could be against uh barbenheimer uh barb yeah that's true yeah. they did put it up against barbenheimer which they're making uh charles band is making a low budget movie called barbenheimer did you see this yeah i did i saw that too uh-huh it looks so stupid I mean, I, I have mixed feelings because on one hand, Charles Band is from the Akron area, so he's a hometown hero. Hometown hero, that's right. But at the same time, it's like, you, you, but you were too late to the party. 
It's striking while the iron is ice cold. Yeah. I tell you, twenty years um, ago that could have worked, but we have social media and it already beat it too. You know, I'll watch it because Charles Band does put out a lot of schlock, and it's usually <laughs> pretty quality schlock. Yeah, and that's what this is going to be. It's going to be quality schlock, but uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, I'm I'm glad the strike is over at least tentatively, and they seem to have come up with some kind of agreement agreement that is seems to be. F- fair or at least right. the parties involved are like you know what or at least this is acceptable for now i think yeah, like, it passed with like an 86 percent okay positive vote or something like that so the majority of actors are like okay all right they're they're cool with it so that's so that's good i also kind of hope this makes it to where v, uh, voice actors get better pay yes oh yeah yes voice actors in general yeah they they, they are definitely underpaid. get the yeah they definitely get the short end of the stick yeah, right i'm honestly waiting for the voice actors um video game voice actors uh guild to go on strike here oh, yeah. pretty soon because they are criminally underpaid for oh, what they do oh yeah. it's long overdue mm-hmm. and and game companies are starting to use ai uh trained uh voices for oh for speaking of ai well. voices this isn't quite related but it, but it is and it isn't I have been seeing a rise in like ads like on either apps or games where they have celebrity voices saying things that those celebrities have never said. Oh, that's gross. Yeah. That, yeah. That's of extreme poor taste. Yeah. Like I saw one where it had the rock. Well, and that's what, and that's what part of the SAG uh, thing is going to try to, curtail a little bit because now they legally can't without compensating getting express written permission and compensating the actors used within those ads yeah it's it's weird it's weird to me because it's like okay you're making it seem like this this actor is actually endorsing this product of this service oh it's grimy oh it feels real grimy i agree it's it's predatory in the worst sense oh yeah and I, f- and I feel like it, it only thrives in the mobile market or the mobile because it's the wild, wild west. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because you no have all the attention to uh, yeah. clash of clans ads or whatever. Or, yeah, yeah. Or, or services that are played in ads on those games, you know? Yeah, right. Oh. It's not, it's not great. No, no, I agree. It, no, it's, it's, it's a lawless Chinese company base or Korean or, or, yeah, Korean. or Korean stuff. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a, mm, it's a little, it rough. needs to get locked down. It really does. I agree. I agree. All right. So let's talk about some movie trailers uh, or first, just trailers in general. Just not, trailers. Not all these are movies. Some of them are TV right. shows. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Um, how about avatar? The last airbender. You know we've what? Been, we've been following this one for a yeah, while. Now. You know what? When I first saw the stills, I was like, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, y- yeah. You're you're piquing my curiosity now. The trailer came out. Holy crap! Yeah, yeah. It's like, in right. It's yeah. In. yeah. Yeah. No, this has my full attention now. I plan on watching it day it, one. There. It seems like they're getting it right. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, but why did the creators leave? Why did those two dudes leave? Right. Because it looks good. Yeah. I'm I'm nervous. The only thing I could think is because they. A television series is going to have less episodes in general than a ser- a, a season of animation. Perhaps the um, higher ups uh, wanted the executive producers or whatever wanted to trim sections of the story that mm. could have been considered filler, filler or fluff. And the original creators were like, no, we yeah. must preserve the entirety of our our, our craft. Right. Maybe that's it. Right. I, I assume it's going to be like 40, 50 minute episodes and like eight to 10. Yeah, that's probably I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be very similar to the One Piece series. Yeah. Eight or nine episodes. Yeah, it's a di- it's a wildly different medium. So there's certain things you can get away with in animation that doesn't translate into live action. Right, right. That's what I'm guessing. I mean, we'll see. But all in all, things look good. Ten- things look right. Cautiously optimistic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I will say it was kind of funny seeing... Um, when Aang activates like his avatar state powers mm-hmm. in the show, you know, his tattoos, his airbending tattoos always glow. I kind of like the effect they had in the, in the trailer where it kind of like flowed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it kind of gave me like a, like a Godzilla vibe. A kind of, yeah. Right. I, I got the vibe of, okay, this is like a strong wind. It's like a kind well, of, well, not just that, but like it was like, a, you know, it was like you actively seeing it powering up or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Instead of just, just being a glow. And I'm like, Okay. Yeah. Nice okay. little detail. Yeah. And yeah. There, and I thought it was an interesting creative take. Mm-hmm. And there were plenty of uh, 
kind of, I don't want to say deep cuts because they weren't really deep cuts, but like the trailer had the Kyoshi Warriors in it. Yeah. 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 Wasn't expecting that. Which means we're getting a little further than I thought we would. Yeah, we yeah. did see Oz, uh, Fire Lord Ozai, which you I know mean, they're you gonna. Saw, you saw him in the in the first stills. series of the show, but it was always like in, in, the back, shadow, in shadow or background. But they're but they're not gonna put Daniel Daniel Day Kim in the shadows. No, right. they got to see that guy's yeah, face. Yeah, no, you're, you're looking Daniel disapprovingly Day at you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> it looks it it looks good. I'm interested in seeing what this new take is going to be, and. Hopefully it uh, erases the memory of the M. Night Shyamalan uh, uh, film version of it. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, uh, cautiously optimistic. Well, definitely. It'll be definitely interesting to see. Right. If, if this series works and they're able to. The other thing we have to worry about it with Netflix is are they going to cut funding and cancel the show before they finish the end of the series because Netflix has a habit of canceling shows two seasons in without yeah. finishing it. I don't know. I feel like there's enough dedicated love to the franchise yes. that yeah. they'd be dumb to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But Avatar still has a loyal fan base almost 20 years in that has been following it all the way through. Yeah. Through, through the true. best and worst of times. Yeah. Also the fact that, you know, they can just hop on the brand recognition. The fact that the creators themselves went off to make their own studio to make specifically Avatar content. True. Right. Very so, true. I mean, they'd be really dumb to not accidentally step into this brand synergy. But Netflix is not a smart company. This yeah, is yeah, they're, true. They're, 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 this would not be the first time they shoot themselves in the foot or, at worst, drop an active grenade in their pockets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. I like that. All right, so what are some of the other trailers we have? Uh, Godzilla Minus One. Yep, another trailer for Godzilla Minus One dropped. Mm-hmm. Kind of gave us a little more, little more of a look at this reboot. Ish. Ish. Although Godzilla has had so many reboots I over know, the years. I know, right. I know. I not saying that I need my Godzilla to have a strong continuity between films, but how many just like okay, how many times can you watch P- Peter Parker get stung by the bit, or by get bit the, by a spider? By the spider. How many times can you see ba- someone ba- uh, Godzilla come from the water? Bat- yeah, Batman's Bruce. parents being killed. How many times can you see Godzilla rise from the water and people going, "Oh my gosh, what is this? I've never seen this before." Oh yeah, <laughs> like, like the only reason why the last voyage of the Demeter worked is because they took a small chapter and expand it into a full feature, mm-hmm. and they don't make Dracula this aristocratic count they look make him he's, look, he's a monster yeah, he's they, literally he's, a monster yeah, yeah 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 if you were to play vampire the masquerade he's a full-blown nosferatu yeah yeah like that's why it worked so yeah i i'm i'm excited for the godzilla minus one but again i'm i mean i feel like a, of, as a godzilla fan we're almost stuffing ourselves too much yeah yeah between because monarch and the, the monarch Amer- all american the, stuff all the legendary stuff mm-hmm. and um the Shin series doing its thing. Yeah. Although, you know what? Shin Godzilla did happen a long time ago. It was That's, multiple years ago. That is true. Yeah. That so, is true. Yeah. But I don't know. One thing I thought was kind of interesting in a different take is, again, like I kind of mentioned in the in the Avatar uh, trailer bit, they show him powering up his atomic blast. Yeah. And I thought it was cool in the legendary stuff where it was like a pulse. Mm-hmm. And this one, his spines actually extend out of his body. Yeah. Like, and it almost turns into like a, how like control rods work in a nuclear reactor. Right. Right. Yeah. So when he expends it, they're probably going to push back in. Push back in. Sure. So I'm like, you know what? That's a cool take. I like that. That, that is a, that is a cool creative. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, it's just kind of take on it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, speaking of cool creative takes and whether or not it is one, <laughs> Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Yep, the uh, sequel to the Afterlife. Afterlife and also the quote unquote prime Ghostbusters universe. I I love Ghostbusters as a concept. Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2 were oh, yeah. some of my favorite movies growing up. Easily, I'll still easily, go back easily. and watch Ghostbusters 1 and 2. Any day of the week. Afterlife was fine. And you know what? The 
2016? The 2016 one was fine as well. It was doing its own thing, and at times it seemed like it was trying a little too hard. But it was fine. It was okay. What's not my favorite film? It was never going to ca- to uh, fully recapture or top the magic of the original. That's well, that's even the even issue. even Ghostbusters two doesn't even do that. Yeah, but yeah. at times uh, Ghostbusters two is just resting. What do on you the mean? He is Vigo. <laughs> you are like the buzzing of flies to him. <laughs> Yeah, I love that dude though. <laughs> oh yeah, Yon- yeah, the guy who plays Yano. Yeah. For I so I watched that movie as a kid. I was one of my favorites, and for years I thought he that was his real accent. <laughs> when he showed up on Ally McBeal, I was so confused as a as a preteen because I was like, "But that's Janos. Boy, he's doing a great job masking his accent." <laughs> no, as it turns out, it's it's completely wrong. Anyway, um, I. I don't know how to feel about this uh, Ghostbusters uh, new yeah, movie. Yeah, turning, turning the ghost into a disaster film. It, uh. I like my Ghostbusters when it is a comedy that also happens to be a, a su- semi-horror action-y thing. For me, go- I never in, felt in Ghostbusters, like- the comedy was always first. Oh, yes, definitely, oh, definitely. Yeah. And, and also, most of the ghosts aren't truly scary, they're nuisances. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're like you're. It's it's like you're. You have a, a infest infestation of mice or yeah. like, roaches. Roaches. Like, yeah, they're, yeah. They're a nuisance. Like a couple times, some of the ghosts were kind of creepy. Like like the like the skeletal like taxi driver. And that one. Yeah. That one's yeah. that. <laughs> and, and Zool. Zool. You know, those are the well, big ones. Well, Zool's kind of like, cheesy. That bodysuit is. So but I'm thinking cool. like you know like your Slimers. Or, yeah. Or, or, or Marshmallow Man. Or the marsh. Yeah, the Marshmallow Man. Just or, or, they're. Or the or or the library ghost. The library it's not ghost. really right. scary. It's, it's a spooky. Yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. It's you get spooked by it the same way you get spooked by seeing a mouse if you if you're not a fan of yeah. Friends. Like they're not truly it's, terrifying creatures. Yeah, but this one turns it into New York. It's frozen and people possibly get impaled by icicles. We don't. That? I don't need my Ghostbusters to be an epic action. No. Uh, action adventure. It's. It I really, feel like that's where the 2016 one kind of falters too, because there's there's like that huge third act quote unquote battle scene where, where it tries to be like an MCU movie. Oh yeah. yeah, that's the MCU vacation of the Ghostbusters franchise is it's to its detriment. Yes, I I you know I it would it's it wouldn't be right for me to say oh I wish these movies were like the originals because that was lightning in a bottle that was a one. It was clear that the first Ghostbusters was a fluke. Right. Like, oh, yeah. Like, from, from like I said, two was good, but it was a fluke. Yeah. It shouldn't have been as, as big a hit. It shouldn't have been as good as it was. Yeah. It, but also the fact that you had a, a, bu- a bunch of really big names in the 80s doing this movie. Working who, who on, also on, on all their, cylinders, yeah. running on all cylinders, just, yeah. In back, their prime. Back when yeah. they cared. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I... I or li- could care. I like the idea of adding some some more comedic actors to the film. Like Patton Oswalt's going to be in it. Uh, Kamel Nanjiani is going to be in it. Good. Paul Rudd is back in. Great. Okay. Fine. But it... It's leaning too heavy into the action adventure and not enough into the situational comedy, which I think was the right. The yeah. real spirit of not, not, <laughs> no, no pun intended, but the real spirit of the Ghostbusters. It was, it was the heart. It, the heart. Yeah, it was. An, at the end of the day, Ghostbusters as a franchise should be a comedy first. And yeah. these and afterlife, I mean, look at their after life and this new one. Not comedies first. Look at their look at look, look at the their their opening gig in the Ghostbusters movie when they go to the hotel. Yeah. They're like, Ray, it slimed me. It's yeah. <laughs> it's also very blue collar. Yeah, very oh, blue collar. Yeah. 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 I mean, don't don't get me wrong. Uh Dan Aykroyd's character and Bill Murray's characters are supposed to be scientists. They are quote unquote doctors. But Bill Murray's character, you could tell it is like uh, he just barely Got his doctorate. Yeah, like, yeah. Like he did the bare minimum work. What do you call the person who graduated last in their class? Yeah, a doctor. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. you're still a doctor even if you barely passed. You know, that's that kind of situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was more of a he. It was a shyster. Yeah, it was more oh, of a yeah, 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 yeah. He was a he was a snake oil salesman 
yes. who stumbled onto an actual thing. Technically a doctor, but not yeah. really. Right. Like, kind of like yeah. Dr. Phil. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can't read the board. Do we have any other trailers? Uh, the Iron Claw. Yes, Iron, Iron Claw. Claw. Yeah, we were talking about this before the uh, the uh, bikes were running quite a bit. This is the uh, the Von the, Erich family wrestling yes. wrestling movie. Yeah, that, both as a true crime and as a long time wrestling fan, it's one that I'm interested in. But understandably, for those who don't know the true story, it's incredibly tragic. Basically, the Von Erichs were like the Kennedy family of wrestling. Yes, that's it, a good way of putting it. it. And both it, the prestige because they were the all American Christian boys, but. Mm-hmm. Just also so the much. tragedy. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, yes, they're they're the safer one of the Von Erichs that got scrubbed from it based on the trailer. They're gonna follow the story because you can't really do it justice without discussing the immense tragedy. Yeah. So this is going to be a very interesting docudrama. It's not going to be a fun film. This is this is an Oscar film if I ever seen it. Uh huh. But, and it's and it's done by A twenty four, which they usually do uh, horror films. Uh, and they're, they're art house, yeah, art house stuff, yeah, yeah. And they're and they're kind of branching out a little bit. This is definitely more art housey, but it's, yeah. I mean, it's it's in the direction of your Ray or your Ali or some of your other docudramas. Yeah, but it's it's not a fun story. Yeah. What happened to the Von Eric wrestling family? Yeah, I mean, there's still Kevin who's still around, but. Uh, yeah, there there were five or possibly six brothers, and no, there was one left. Well, there were six, but one one, one one passed away as a small child. A small child, and yeah, there's there's one left. Let's put it that way. Yeah. It's not a. Yeah. It's interesting. It's not going to be fun. Yeah, <laughs> but Zac Efron is perched the star as Kevin, and it has he, a stacked cast. Yep. Uh, Kip. Yep. He, Zac Efron is Kevin, who he once again made a full on body transformation. To look as close to Kevin as you can imagine. Yes, uh, they have the the guy from the Bear, Jeremy Allen White. I think is his yep, name. He's playing Carrie. I've been seeing him pop up a lot lately and stuff. He, yeah, because he, he was on Shameless and then he was on the Bear. And he's finally gotten to that point where he's now actually able to do movies full time. Yeah, is breaking out. I honestly, if they were to make, I know they're making that Wonka movie and it looks terrible, but if they were to make like a serious dramatic Willy Wonka movie. He would be the perfect gene, like serious Gene Wilder. <laughs> he would be the closest you could do to Gene Wilder. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah. So, and some of the other people that they have in it, I, did you, uh, MJF from uh, AEW MJF. is playing a uh, Lance Von Eric, who was not actually of the family, but when they lost the, the first, ringer kind of thing, yeah, yeah, basically he was their fill in because he looked the part. Yeah. And they have guys like uh, Chavo Guerrero, mm-hmm. who is uh, the, uh, the stunt choreographer. Mm-hmm. He was in WWE. Yes. Uh, but he was, um, he's the stunt choreographer as well as playing, uh, Gino Her- Hernandez. Yes. I think. Yeah. Gino Hernandez. Yeah. A- another wrestler that, um, I had met a, a tragic, end. a tragic, yeah, a tragic, uh, cocaine fueled end. <laughs> Yeah, as it turns out. The, yeah, the eighties and early nineties wrestling world is a wild world. It's yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of fresh powder in those hills. Uh, that also a it's lot snowing of, every day. <laughs> that also a lot of al- alleged uh, organized crime connections. Yes. Well, you kind of well, G- Gino for sure yeah, did. Yeah. Well, yeah, but alleged. Alleged. Yes. I mean, you kind of can't have a huge sporting. Entertainment. Franchise entertainment without possibly attracting that element. Oh yeah. Oh sure. Yeah. It's like Vegas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or r- rock and roll back in the day. Yeah. 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 Alleged. But nice. anyway, yeah. Iron Claw is actually going to be out in about in about a month. It's yeah. coming up. Yep. Next very month. soon. Right around the time for award season. Yeah, and it's it's going to have like the you Oscar said. It's, push. it's it's yeah. It's definitely going to have a, con- a contention. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Zach Zach Efron for a while has been ch- trying to chase the award, so he's trying to go for his Oscar. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear that uh, before his passing, um, uh, Matthew Perry what, was throwing around the idea of doing a uh, biography, like writing a biography about him? Yeah, and Matt wanted, Man. And wanted, uh, yeah, and yes. uh, wanted Zac Efron to play him in the film version uh, of his. Uh, I, I could see that. Dealing with his, you know, his uh, substance abuse stuff yeah. and everything. I, I was not a fan of Friends, but. From what I saw, Chandler was the character I kind of liked the most, and it just makes it more sad given what he dealt with in real life. Oh, I was a I was always a Joey guy because he never had the A plot. He always had the goofy B plot, and I right. couldn't care less about the A plot. Oh yeah, no, he was the the set my second favorite. Yeah, but also Matthew Perry himself fought for a lot of things in the script for Chandler. Mm-hmm. Like yes. you know, he never wanted he never wanted Chandler to cheat on Monica, and yeah, he good. fought for that stuff. 
Yeah. Because the because the writers wanted to bring in those kind of plot points, and he's like, no, no, no. No, that, someone on that, this cast has to be a good guy. Kind yeah, of. yeah. So, so someone has to have some sense of morality that's yeah. consistent. Yeah, yeah. It all can't be like Seinfeld where everybody sucks, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah, but that's the point, though. I know. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. Um, okay, so speaking of movies, they are um, <laughs> they announced this is weird. Uh, yeah, Nintendo yeah. announced that there is a live action Z- Legends of Zelda movie in the works. Through Sony. Yeah. So I'm going to say it's by through Illumination. No, no, no live it's, action. It's oh, live oh, action. It's, they're it's going, not they're animated. Going, oh, yeah. God, they're going full like, live action with it. I, and it's. Yikes. I am. I, I'm not sure how I feel about it. I mean, I get why, because there's been three classic video game properties that got actual successful movie adaptations with. Detective Pikachu, Sonic, and then Mario, correct? Yes. Uh, yeah, well, yes. and Mortal Kombat actually d- made its uh, money yeah. back. And, and uh, It's made enough money to do a second yeah, one. Yeah, so, so that's, that's four for four. Yeah. So, yeah, the iron is pretty hot right now. And if anything was going to translate into live action, I guess Zelda might be one of the best yeah, bets because it, it has that fantasy epic to it. Yeah, it, it has and that And it's scope. been long enough since the movie Legend, which is... Basically, Legends of Zelda with the <laughs> names filed off. Right. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. It's though got... I love Tim Curry as the Prince of Darkness. Oh, oh yeah. He's, Can you imagine Tim Curry as Ganondorf? I, can't... I have the Triforce <laughs> of power. <laughs> Cheese pizza. Cheese pizza. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing is Link has always been... A silent protagonist. That that's the big question. I would love for them to keep him a silent protagonist, but you know it's not going to happen. Yeah. But, but then you worry that it's going to turn into like a CDI Zelda, it's, it's or, not, or, or or the cartoon. Ooh. No, I don't think. I don't think. I think Nintendo is smart enough to not, not do go, that. Not go completely kid kidify it. I think um, they're smart enough to do like a light PG-13. Fair enough. I think, uh, you know, action adventure, not m- more mature than the Super Mario Brothers movie, the most recent one, but not like a hardcore Lord of the, Lord of the Rings level. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Light, light PG-13. Yeah. A light Lord um, of the Rings. A fantastical action and, you know, that sort of thing, but not make it. It has lighter elements, but not like a full blown. Yeah, right. yeah. A I don't kids know. Movie. I, I, I'm torn up because Zelda is the franchise is definitely one of my top favorites. Uh, when yeah. it comes to those, the most games I've played, I own so much Zelda merchandise. Hell, I even have a tattoo on my body. <laughs> That's true. From the Legend yeah. of Zelda, it, it also has among the the greatest batting averages for the franchise for a game franchise. That when you think yeah. of, when you think of Nintendo, the first thing you think of is Mario. But a lot of times, the second thing you think of is Zelda. Yeah, it's right. Yeah, it's it's right. Oh there. yeah, it's the one that you always go for because you know it's going to be good. Yes, I mean you have like the trifecta. You've got Mario, you have Zelda, and you've got like Metroid. I don't even think I would say Metroid these no. days because well, not these days. No, yeah, not but, these no. days. Back but, in the day, Metroid. But these days, I would almost put Animal Crossing. Just based on pure merchandise that I see in stores, Animal yeah. Crossing would be the the third major. But also, Animal Crossing has a huge cast of characters you can easily monetize. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Uh, I am just concerned that yeah, they make uh, they have Link talk, which you know they're they're gonna they're gonna do. They're they're not gonna be bold enough to make him mute or or something to that effect. They're they're not gonna do it. I am worried that they're going to get someone like a Timothy Chalamet to play Link he, that, because that seems like the easy choice. Yeah. And I don't think he's right for the role. Yeah. He's his approach would be incorrect for what that needs. And also he just doesn't have, give me that kind of, you know, size and physicality. That's I think I, but, he, but Link is supposed to be a little bit kind of wayfish. He's supposed right. to be a little, not full blown androgynous, but he's supposed to be a little, Link is supposed to be a little bland yeah. because the whole point is his, I mean, his name Link was because he was supposed to be the link between the player and the game. Right. That's the whole point behind the name. He's supposed to be a kind of a self insert kind of thing. Yeah. He's, he's supposed to be kind of 
b- boring. Yeah. yeah. He's supposed to be the audience avatar. Exactly. exactly. But also, with all the alternate timelines in Zelda and everything... Yeah. What They're you... gonna do Ocarina of Time. That's yeah. what it's gonna be yeah, because the, that's the one everyone loves. Yeah, it's the big one. It's, it's the... they're either gonna do that or Breath of the Wild. Yeah, th- those are the two current touchstones of the franchise right now. Those are the those are the two big ones. Honestly, if I had to choose between the two, o- I think Ocarina of Time is uh, would be easier to translate into a film. Yeah, whether they decide to do the whole thing over multiple films or they can cut out. <laughs> They can cut out the water temple easily. <laughs> oh, always. They can cut out chunks of. Uh, they can actually cut out a large swath of the adult link timeline area of. I mean, Ocarina it's, of Time it's so and dystop- still fit it into a two and a half it's hour. It's so movie. S- dystopian. Yeah, adult link timeline. Right. But it would be just a dystopian in a light PG thirteen fashion. I would say. I I don't want a Timothy Chalamet. I don't want a, uh, a um, Tom. Um, Spider-Man. Tom Holland. Tom Holland. I don't go with either an unknown or do something a little bit out of the box. Don't pick the same guys. Honestly, you know what? Um, Jeremy Allen White. Jer- Jeremy Allen White. Jeremy Allen White. He's a little older, but yeah. if they were to do a, an a, adult link, a kid link, an adult link. Yeah. That would be an interesting take because he is just boring looking enough to yeah, work as he, Link. He would be the adult Link. I think the tri- kid Link, it has to be a relatively unknown person. Yes. Well, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it, but, I, but then, but then you run into, but then you run into the problem with quote unquote child actors. Right. You know what? Child actors have come a long way since. Oh, since I know. I know. Day. I know. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, give them a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we have gone way over on time, so yeah. we're going to have to wrap things up. Uh, again, Parker, thank you again for coming on the show. It's really great having you. Thank you for having me And, on. Uh, yeah, we'll get you back on sometime soon here. Uh, you've been listening to Nerd Overload. Thank you very much for tuning in. You can find us each and every day over at nerdoverload.com. You can find us on Facebook, Twitch, Instagram, and Patreon at Nerd Overload Now. Uh, you can email the show, staff at nerdoverload.com, if you have any comments about what we've been talking about, any questions for us. It just anything we're gonna read them you just email us just yeah. do it why not what are you waiting for do it yeah uh we also have a phone number that you can call us if you if typing is not your thing you can call us 419-561-5556 uh you can find all of our episodes on podcast apps um you know what? i'm gonna highlight google play google play this time any of the other ones don't worry about google play go go find us on there it's it's there i promise <laughs> Yeah, lastly, again, thank you, Parker, being on the show, and thank you for helping us out on the uh, Facebook page. And uh, I'd also like to thank David Pencil for the use of our intro and outro. You can find more of his stuff over at davidpencil.com. So again, thank you all for tuning in, and we will be back next week. Hit, hit!